ไปอยู่ตรงไหนนั่นรอเลยโค้งโค้งที่มันข้างหน้าเนี่ยไปเลยไปOkay, how fast should you be running your intervals? How much effort should you be putting into your interval sessions? And how can you get the very most out of those key sessions so that you can get towards your goal faster and become a really good trainer in the interval session? For me, it's really important initially to identify the goal. If you're training for a 5K or if you're training for a marathon, those are going to be different paces and different effort levels that you've got to become comfortable with. For me, I'm trying to build efficiency at moving over the ground as comfortably as I possibly can at the race pace that I'm trying to aim for. So if that's a marathon, I want to become as comfortable and as efficient as I possibly can, heart, lungs, and my body at moving over the ground at marathon pace. So I'm going to do that in the midweek interval session. I'm going to do that in the specific long runs at the weekend that are building stamina and endurance. Very, very important to get those two right and then to To box those in with recovery runs and easy runs, so you're putting yourself in a great place to really hit the interval session hard, and again to hit the long run hard at the weekend, so you can gain as much super compensation from those two runs as possible. That's where you're getting the majority of your gains. It all starts with the warm up. It's amazing how many people sort of neglect the warm up because they don't do it for their recovery runs, they don't do it for their easy runs. The long run is starting off slow, so they don't do it for their long run, and that crosses over into the interval session. So the, the session where you're usually running the fastest, at least as fast as race day, you're not warming up for. And then when you get to race day, it's like, oh, we should be doing some kind of a warm up, and you kind of follow everybody else. Where in actual fact, that's the perfect time, the interval session and the long run, especially if it's a specific long run, meaning there's segments within that or, or a segment within that that's race pace specific, which is difficult to say. But those two sessions are key to warm up for, and it's incredibly important. To get into the habit of warming up for your runs, so you can get the very most out of those sessions, and it's not just physical. It's not just warming up the muscles. It's warming up the getting the, the heart and lungs prepared to get up to that level. So if your session is 20 times one minute, and it's taking you three or four reps to get your heart rate into the right zone to the right effort level, then you're missing out on two, three, four reps. And then all of a sudden, it's just 16 or 17 times one minute, and you're probably sort of fatigued towards the end, and then and then try to run the last couple quick. It doesn't need to be like that. You don't want any of it for free. What you're also doing, apart from physical and physiological, getting the body ready, you're also getting the mind ready. Okay, what are we doing today? What is the purpose of it? What's the goal, and how does this fit into the goal? Important to ask yourself that as often as possible. What are we trying to achieve? How does this fit in? It's amazing when I speak to runners how many people are working on an ad hoc basis, and even if they have structure in in, in their week, and it looks like midweek interval session or tempo, and then the weekend we're doing long slow distance, even though they have some structure, and maybe they even respect the easy runs and recovery runs, and they see how that fits into the bigger picture, I'm often seeing that people wake up and they don't know what they're going to be doing that day. As soon as I wake up, I know okay, today is 20 times 500 meters. And the purpose of this is to run them 5k pace, so I can get ready to run fast 5k and a fast 10k. There's going to be 60 seconds rest in between, and that warm up essentially needs to look like that. So I'll start with three, four, 500 meters walking, making sure the body is okay, making sure there's no tightness from the previous long run, the last hard session. And then once I feel like okay, I'm jogging, and I'm jogging super slow. And again, it comes from experience. It comes from experience of not getting injured in a session. But usually the injury comes on the next run or the next run after that because your body has picked something up, but during a session it, it's masked by adrenaline. So it's important for me. It's like an MOT check, a check on your car. It's like, is there any damage? Is there? Any, am I still good to go after two, three, four days, however many recovery days you've had? And then if you are, it's a slow jog, and then it's gradually getting faster to a point where, okay, I'm doing some dynamic stretching, waking up the glutes, waking up the hamstrings, making sure the calves are ready, the quads are nice and loose, and then I'm starting to do some strides, and then the pace is gradually picking up. Psychologically, okay, what do I want to be doing for these 500 meter repeats? And then I'm hitting two times 250 meters, two times half the rep at the pace that I want to be running, and it might take me three, four 
of those reps to get up to the pace that I think I can hold for 20 times 500 meters. This is just an example. But what that usually feels like is 15 minutes of gradually from walking to jogging to jogging faster to running to stride to the dynamic stretching to actually doing between two and four of the reps but at less of a pace and then hitting it for two times half of the rep. Then I'm ready. And then I can do 20 times 500 meters. I know that I'm trying to do them at 5K pace. So my heart rate, exact, I know exactly what my heart rate is supposed to be doing. And what that will feel like is if we look at zone one, means for me, it means you can pretty much do it all day. It's like walking in the Himalayas. You can do it. You might need to stop and have a break sometimes because you can let your legs rest. When you get into zone two, it's like, okay, we're doing something. We're not on the sofa anymore. We're actually doing something, but it's still comfortable. I could still have a chat with somebody. It's still conversational pace. Once you go into zone three, it's like, oh, okay, we, we, we're pushing now and we're actually, we're physically doing something and I can get out the odd sentence but I can't have a conversation. And I don't wanna have a conversation. I'm in something, I'm focused. Something comes alive within you. What zone four, four feels like is I can no longer get out. I can get out like words or small, tiny little sentences, but nothing more. And again, I don't wanna get out of that. So if you just look at those four levels and you're working in zone three, zone four, and that's how it feels. Okay, we're pushing. And then zone five, which I would be in for my 5K, I'm pushing zone four and zone five. I would be in for my 5K, then I'm pushing. I can't get out of sentence. If somebody comes towards the treadmill or somebody comes towards the track, I don't, I, don't, I don't want anything to do with them and I'll sort of hit them when I hit the recovery. I'm completely focused and zoned in, in flow state within the session. And that's come from the warm up, but it's also coming from the knowledge of, okay, I'm trying to go for something really big in the next three months, two months, one month, however long your goal race is away. That's important, and I'm thinking about that. So I'm thinking about, okay, how, does this, how is this gonna feel once I try to do this for the entire race? So I'm thinking about the race and visual, it's visualization of how the race will feel and what does it look like and how am I gonna get the best out of this? And also, where am I at now? And how does, what, what, how does that compare to where I need to be and what do I need to do in order to get there? It's super important to constantly be checking yourself, depending on where you are in your running journey. You may have been running for years, you might be sort of coming back to running or you might be trying to sort of break through, through a plateau. If you've not worked with structure before, it's brilliant because it's going to give you so much progress so long as that progress is gradual. And the interval session is a key factor within that progress, within that improvement. What you also want to do is if you've got a 13 week training program, and let's say 11 and a half weeks of you know, key training sessions and then nine, 10 days of taper, a week and a half of taper, it's a lot of training sessions, 10, 11, long runs and 10, 11 interval sessions. If you tried to think three weeks ago what you actually did within an interval session and things like how it felt, how I slept the night before. Some of this, of course, is tracked on software and it's on your watch now so you can look back. But how you felt, when it got tough during the session, when, when did you have to take extra recovery? What, how much water did you take on? How much sports drink? How many gels? Are you working with race day nutrition? That's got to be, for me, it's handwritten and it's in a diary. And it's how did you feel? And it's pretty extensive because I know that looking back over the year or over a five year period, I wanna see the trend moving forward. And those are the things usually in the diary that are telling me what I'm, what is capable, what I'm capable of in my future sessions. So if it's 20 times 500 meters, it might be a faster pace today, but I slept bad. I felt awful from 12. I had to sort of adjust the session, had to adjust the pace. But when I look back on that versus a perfect session, they might look identical because the average pace was the same. And it kind of looks the same on a heart rate graph. So you can judge it wrong like that. Whereas if you've got the notes in there, it's just an added level of exactly what, you know, a professional athlete would be doing. If you're new to interval running, and you're just getting started and maybe you're worried that, oh, I can't get my heart rate high enough. What I see from the All In Run Club, so adults who are relatively new, different levels, relatively new to interval training. And I also got this when I was coaching kids, is they just go off too quick because they have no idea. They know they're supposed to be running fast, but they don't know how fast. And therefore, it's important to learn that lesson of pacing. But what will also happen is you have to implement the skill of running faster. If you say to somebody, okay, I'm gonna ask you to do 20 times one minute, and maybe that starts with 12 times one minute, and you're gonna run as fast as you possibly can, but pace the session 12 times one minute with 60 seconds rest in between. They, they will think, it's only a minute running, I can really push this. You usually go out too fast, and after three, four, 
knackered. And then the fourth, fifth, they're kind of like, oh, okay, I need extra rest and the recovery. And so the recovery is not coming down. And then all of a sudden they've, they've massacred the session, but it's a great lesson. And it's a really important lesson to learn because once they come back next week for the 15 times one minute, they'll realize that actually they're only one minute, but I need to respect for these because they're actually quite tough. It's much more difficult than me just going out for a 15 minute run. Especially this happens when you, your regular runner is going out there four, five, six times a week and just running for 30, 40, 50 minutes at a relatively slow pace. So you add into that race and you know, heart rate is out of control. Add into that intervals, it should be even more out of control, but you have to insert the skill first. So if you're not used to running fast, if you ask somebody to do five times 400 meters and they're not used to running fast, it's a completely different skill to when they've been going out there and running for 30 minutes. So you might not be able to get your heart rate high enough because you cannot use your body in the way that it's supposed to be used to run 400 meters as fast as you can. A little trick that I learned, and it's common sense really, but if it's been a few weeks or if it's been time since you've ran fast, you might wanna come at it from a longer interval. So if you're used to going out there running five, six, eight K, 10 K, being out there for an hour or whatever, but you're not used to going quick, you might want to break that into longer intervals so that you can gradually go into those slower than you would do one minute intervals. So it's not a shock to the system. You're probably going to be able to handle more volume and you're probably within the 10 minute rep, you're likely to be able to get your heart rate into the right zone. And therefore you feel like, okay, okay can't get a sentence out anymore. And I'm spending a lot of time at that. And that's the pace that I'm gonna be running for my 5K or my 10K. And, and that is a really important skill to have because what you can then do is bring that interval length down from 10 minutes to seven and a half minutes to five minutes. And you'll realize that actually six times five minutes is way harder than three times 10 minutes because I'm able to go faster. And because there's a little bit more rest in there, I'm able to push more. So get the warm up right build that habit in and understand just how beneficial it is to your performance and how beneficial it is to your progress. Make sure that it's not just the physical and the physiological readiness that you want, but it's also mentally, am I ready to tackle this session? Because if I piece together these sessions over the weeks and months, the race will take care of itself and then you can completely enjoy the race. And there's none of this stuff where Recently, it's like, oh, I don't think I'm ready for Berlin Marathon. I don't think I've done enough training. I, don't, I should have done this or I've missed this session. Training is where the work is. The race is just a party. And that's exactly how you should free your mind up for race day by thinking like that. This is the hard work behind closed doors. Nobody's going to see this. The race is the dance. Then get used to pushing yourself at different levels that I mentioned before. So get used to, okay, what is my one minute pace? What is my three minute pace? What, what is my five minute pace? And how do those paces change if I know I've got to do 12 times one minute or 15 times one minute or 20 times one minute or four times five minutes or six times five minutes? You will then start, start to pace interval sessions and get the very most out of your body and be spending an optimal amount of time, as much time as you possibly can of those, those reps in the right zone and always have 60 seconds rest. Just let the body recover, get it used to having 60 seconds, bring in the heart rate down, bring in the breathing under control and then go in again. And that will help you in itself, that will help you pace the session, whether it's one minute intervals or 10 minute intervals.